How's it going everybody? Doi here, back with another Guilty Gear video, and this one is going to be a super good time because very recently, we received a huge gameplay stream that not only revealed the next two characters making it into this iteration of Guilty Gear, but we also got a breakdown on numerous system changes that will be coming to this game as well when it drops at some point in 2020. Now, of course, within these system changes is where a lot of people are getting upset online, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Because up first, I really wanted to talk about the last two characters to make it in to the six character roster of playable characters that's going to be available in the demo version of the game and those characters are chip and potemkin much like with every other character we've been seeing so far we do have slight redesigns here it's especially noticeable on chip but potemkin has some new stuff up his sleeve as well including a very literal gun on his sleeve i do believe that is new and i, I can't tell you how much i love it and aside from just these two the very nature of the gameplay stream revealed a ton more about the other characters including in the game and that goes for everybody in the entire six character roster we got more information on soul kai may and Axel, pretty much just everybody. Each and every one of those characters has some new stuff they can do, and they're also missing a ton of stuff from the older games, but that comes down to the system mechanics, so I guess we can't avoid that conversation anymore. Uh, a ton of people are losing their minds about some of this stuff, uh, and you know, some of it's for good reason. The biggest change is that Guilty Gear 2020 is going to have less of an emphasis on combos. Combos in the mid screen will generally be shorter than a lot in the Zerd series, but in the corner, there are still some powerful looking combos that do insane amounts of damage. Unfortunately, one area of the combo game that seems to be toned all the way down is the air combo system. And these used to be a relatively big part of the game. A lot of your damage was coming off of some of these more intricate air combos. Now though, even teching in the air is no longer an option. So of course that limits the combo game down immensely. Personally speaking, I do love when fighting games have long or hard combos, just because even though it might not be stuff I could ever do, I'm always so impressed watching people hit that stuff, especially online. Uh, and even when I get hit by that stuff, it makes it a it makes it exciting to see what people are going to do when they land that hit on you. Other changes in mentality when it comes to combos is that low and overhead starters won't really net you a combo of any sort. They're, they'll mostly be kept short in that way. Really, the game wants you to get a majority of your combo damage from those medium starters uh, in range when you just out footsie your opponent. Uh, I think that's what they're more going for uh, if they don't want you to go for those overhead and low starters. You can see elements of this mentality in a lot of facets of the game, but one where I noticed it the most was in the new dust mechanic now, while it's still an overhead, if you hit it without it being a counter hit, your opponent will simply go flying across the screen horizontally, and it will pretty much reset neutral. One of the players brought it up during the gameplay stream, and he said, hey, it kind of feels like a punishment to land your dust now, uh, because you're kind of just sending the opponent away and giving up your turn. And then the developers answered with, So as a general concept, a lot of the moves that you would have used to do a setup or a guard break to kind of get, you know, mix up an opponent, uh, those are don't lead to as many combos as they did previously, but instead the dust attack comes out a lot faster and therefore is relatively a fairly powerful move. Really, I think a lot of the people angry at some of these changes online comes down to the fact that they are making the game more simple. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Guilty Gear 2020 is going to be a more simplified, streamlined, more modern version of Guilty Gear. And this is not just because of the way they're changing the combo game up. They're also doing away with some of the more obtuse things like uh, throws being one frame star up. They also have whiff animations now, so it's more like a Street Fighter throw in a lot of ways other than the command that you have to enter to get the throw. They're also allowing you to block in the air now without faultless defense. They're making it so only certain moves can knock down. They are really stripping away a lot of other features that maybe would be too hard for a casual to grasp upon their first couple hours of gameplay. I'm not really too worried about what Arxis is going to do here in terms of over casualizing the game because I think if anybody is capable of finding that sweet spot, it is Arxis. They've done it before and they can do it again with Guilty Gear, but I do think it's inevitable that somebody that was a longtime Guilty Gear player might not exactly love this game. So in some ways, I can see why some people aren't the biggest fans of these changes because, you know, it's scary to see something you've loved for such a long time change up the formula so much. And while we're still on the topic of making the game simpler, can we talk about how much easier it is to understand Guilty Gear just by looking at it? I remember them saying this was one of their goals of with Guilty Gear 2020, but even in my wildest imaginations, I didn't think that they would make it this much of a priority. You're probably watching this video even if you don't know anything about the old Guilty Gears and you're like, hey, I can kind of understand what's happening here. Every time somebody gets counter hit, the game says counter hit a big giant text. And when somebody gets a debuff or a buff, uh, they get a little sword or negative icon on their name and their profile pictures move with their health bars. <laughs> it's actually crazy how much they 
and made it a priority that you learn while you're watching. Uh, almost to the point where I kind of don't like it because it feels like it's visually holding my hand a little too hard, but I could see myself getting used to that very quickly. Please let me know down below in the comments if it worked for you. Were you watching some of this gameplay and be like, huh, I, I can kind of understand what's going on. So interested to see if this is working on players newer to the franchise. I should also take the time to mention that they specifically said that the UI for the game is not done and it's the, just the demo version of the game and that this is only version one of the game. You know, they're looking for player feedback on pretty much everything and they're going to make changes according to that and what aligns with their vision of what they want the game to be. Personally speaking, I'm not the biggest fan of the UI. I really hope they change that. Also the in-game HUD with the health bars. There's there's some stuff here that I don't like, including that burst, the, the word burst jumps up and down. It overlays with some of the other information, including your character's name. Uh, and it just, I don't know, it looks weird to me. I also don't know how I feel about the round timers being hearts, uh, but you know, that could look a little better in the final version of the game as well. And of course, just other aspects of the game don't look too great other than the winning screen. The winning screen is very good and the transitions from win to animation look amazing as well. Visually, again, the game is stunning. No problems there. But yeah, just a few stylistic changes uh, would be really awesome to see. And with that, those are pretty much all the reason that fans online have been scared or, you know, angry about some of these changes. But I do think there is an upside with all of this, and that is that Guilty Gear is probably going to be more popular than ever, at least here in the West. Not only is the game being simpler going to help that in at least some degree, but also it's clear that they're taking steps to make sure that newer players are introduced well, including an amazing looking commandless screen it shows you how the move looks, tells you what the move is supposed to do, uh, and is overall just an incredible addition. And I hope to see more stuff like that in the final product. And with that said, that's pretty much everything. Again, my thoughts on the matter are, I'm still looking forward to this game immensely, and I know a lot of people are too, and I'm looking forward to those pros getting their hands on the game and seeing if they really like it or if the changes are affecting them. And hey, giving that feedback and seeing what the team does with it are all exciting prospects in my mind. Let me know down below how you feel about all these changes, whether you're a longtime Guilty Gear player or if you're someone looking to get into the series fresh and proper and you just want to let me know how you're feeling about it. While you're down in the comments though, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more things fighting games, including this stuff and Dragon Ball Fighters, pretty much just anything and everything, dude. Other than that, if you want more videos right away, there should be some up on your screen. So make sure to give those a watch if any of them catch your eye. I have been Dr. Thanks again for watching to the end, and I will see you in the next video.